Hello? I'm, I'm sure it was a really nice joke. Uh, I would love, but... <laughs> so, hello everybody. Um, this is Bring Your Kotlin to Work Day, and you may think, what, what, what is that title? What, that, what that does it even mean? Well, as he mentioned before, well, maybe. Uh, as he mentioned before, uh, my name is Guillermo. I work for Badoo, and I work in the London office. Um, but I am not from London, I am not English. So a lot of things surprise me uh, from London. Every day I get surprised, and it doesn't matter, I've been there two years and a half, I still get surprised. One of the things that really surprised me was this one. There's something called Bring Your Dog to Work Day, and it's, a, it's an official day. It's the 22nd of June, in case you feel like uh, doing it as well. And they just, yeah, they just bring dogs to the office. And when I checked the website, uh, for their reasons they were, they were mentioning, and they have this big piece of text. I will read it for you. The presence of, of pets can substantially reduce a person's stress level in the workplace, increase job satisfaction, team cooperation, and morale have all been reported in employees that spend the work with their pets. And it's, it's all in the website, it's true. Um, I was thinking, I can, I can improve this text. Change pet with Kotlin. <laughs> and it's basically my experience. It reduces the stress level and it increases satisfaction and cooperation and morale. Uh, everything is great, right? And how this all started? Well, I watch Google I.O. Uh, and I watched the keynote, and there's this lady being really excited. Yeah, Kotlin! And I was, yeah, Kotlin! At home. And I went to the office and said, yeah, Kotlin! And they told me, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. And I was like, why? <laughs> and I was thinking, I know it, it will be good, I know it can be good, but they don't know. And so we had a meeting. <laughs> it's, it's the last slide with talks, I promise. We had the meeting and they decided that I should prove that it, it was going to be good, uh, because how would we know otherwise? So we started building the case for Kotlin. Um, basically, uh, I need to demonstrate to my team that it's going to be good. I need to warn them to any potential failures or what the hell is going on. The real core of this is don't stay in your Java bubble. Really, like, don't stay in your Java bubble. It's the most important message from me today. Выберите своего пузыря. Thank you. So, why I say this, um, have you seen the, the programmers that, that do COBOL in the banks? Don't be that guy. So now Java is cool, but in 10 years, who knows? So, you know, try Kotlin. There's a button then. So that's what I did. I just went to a website, and I pressed that button, try Kotlin, and I started learning. And just learn the basics. You learn the basics, you start from the very beginning, like, what is a val and what is a var? Who knows the difference? You guys know. Yeah, yeah. good, good. Type and, type and uh, type? <laughs> I don't know how to read that. Easy, right? Bit of difference in the syntax. Yeah, you start, you start rolling, you start rolling. And then you feel confident that you know more or less how it looks. But then fear takes you. Say, ah, but my Kotlin is actually really shitty. <laughs> what about people that know more Kotlin than I do, they will look at my Kotlin and say, oh, that guy, it's, you know, it's the guy who forgets to specify the type. Um, don't worry, I mean, the good news is, it's okay to write Java-ish Kotlin, like, everyone has done it, except the guys who design Kotlin. Um, is any of you here? And maybe, but don't worry, like, it's okay. Don't, don't be scared of that and improve by doing. Just 
that's the best way I found that works for me. And in my team, I've heard their feedback. It, it's the same. Basically, one one guy from our team, uh, I show him the basics on on a Friday. I think it was a long weekend. And when he came back from holiday, he's like, "Man, when when are we starting? I've been the whole weekend doing Kotlin." But Mike, you have a daughter. Yeah, yeah, but Kotlin. <laughs> so yeah. I uh, really recommend the Cotton Cons. Uh, some of them will feel really basic and you say, why am I comparing strings? Or why am I re-implementing the plus operator? Well, it's more like a dojo, like karate. Uh, you, by repeating, you will get confident with it. And you will eliminate this part of, is my Cotton good or not? Uh, I don't know. Just don't worry about it. And even if you still don't feel good about it, you're going to get lots of help. So let the IDE help you. So we are all friends with this guy, <laughs> more or less. It, well, it's kind of hungry for my memory, but it's OK. It's a cool guy, you know. But there is official support. What does it mean? So that, that lady, like, really excited. She was announcing official support. That means that if we go to the IDE and we write something that is totally valid, it's valid logic. But it could be done maybe in a more Kotlin way or a more elegant way. Say if you have uh, some syntax like this, it will tell you you can convert it to a range check. And you are like, I didn't even know that that was possible. But you just execute it. Boom, it's done. It, it's helping you. It's improving. And next time, maybe you think about doing a range check or not, because they have certain implications. Uh, but also let other people help you. Um, there is a lot of people doing Kotlin now. It's kind of good that it's popular because that way it's easier to, to learn. So what, why don't you join uh, open source projects or do code reviews with people who are already doing Kotlin or just read diffs. Reading diffs, I mean, it's not as exciting, but you do learn a lot. Um, shout out to Category. Uh, really nice open source project if you like functional programming. And also let the community help you. Uh, why I mean, what I mean by community, there's a Kotlin Lang Slack channel. Well, the language designers and most of the people who write uh, about Kotlin are, are in. Um, I found it really helpful. And they are nice people. They're not going to point at you like, yeah, that guy. <laughs> He doesn't know what a type uh, with interrogation symbol means. Um, but always be wary. Remember, Kotlin won't make bad code, bad code good. So if you are writing stuff just because you're writing Kotlin, it won't be automatically better. You have to remember that because you are on the hype train, and that's dangerous. So we start building also the case against Kotlin, like, well, is it actually a trend? Are we here? Like, in the peak of inflated expectations, and then all the disappointment will happen, and at some point, people will be like, meh. Well, it depends on us, right? Um, thing is, everyone talks great things about Kotlin, not so people talk about the not so good things. I'm going to tell you all the problems I had. I'm going to tell all the fights I had against, against the compiler, like a lot. So what do you see here? Hell. Annotations. No. No, it's, it's me telling the compiler, what's, what? So um, I saw that I didn't understand much, but I saw the code. I did understand the code about Dagger. Um, this uh, JVM suppress wildcard using Dagger and Kotlin, you're going to use it a lot. Uh, basically, there are a lot of things that the compiler is doing for us, and 99% of the cases it works right. But sometimes it's not as smooth. Uh, you may have to tell the compiler, no, I actually want this. And some on also some of other stuff, like the same language. Uh, so this is an extract of the documentation. If we highlight a really important part, is that the classes are all final by default. 
and that's nice, right? Effective Java says so, so, so good. So final by default, it's amazing. We are, we are being better just by writing Kotlin. No, what did I say before? No, <laughs> Kotlin won't, won't make your, your code good. If you just don't think about it, this will happen. Mokito won't be happy. <laughs> all exceptions. And all the test threads, everyone's had. What's the solution? Oh, let's make everything open. No, you're, you're losing the whole, the whole point. Then why are you even using Kotlin? So one part that goes really unnoticed in, in, in the release notes of Mokito is this one. Mock the Unmockable. So it's like the title of a movie. Mock the Unmockable. Um, now uh, you actually can opt in for mocking final classes. Like if you want to, you can. You just need to drop sim really, s really simple file in your test uh, sources. It's all documented if you go to Mokito. And actually they made the, the name like the film, so it's easy to remember. Mock the Unmockable. And you will be able to keep doing mocks like you were doing. You don't need to do crazy experiments or all interfaces or I don't know. Um, another of the problems uh, uh, we had is a style guide. So JPrints does recommend certain good practices, but I was looking at my teammates uh, in the iOS team. They use Swift. They have been using Swift for a while. And they have this, they have a repo, public one, Swift style guide. It's all the style guide for Swift they have. And all the team follows that. What do we have in the Android team? <laughs> well, um, I think this way is cool, but <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> um, there are some tools that go well with that. Like for instance, you can have detect that will uh, rewrite your code if you wish so, but what is the right way? Well, no one knows, we're still figuring out. So by now you may be a bit sleepy, so quiz time. What's wrong here? Well, this one is easy because even the compiler knows. Must be initialized, what do you mean by must be initialized? Yeah, something not so obvious is that the order in what you declare this actually matters. So you cannot use it before you initialize it. Even if it's declared, it's not initialized. So the right, right hand side of the equals. So, but this one is easy, even the compiler knows. So we, we move it and the compiler is happy. And we keep developing. Um, I really like this uh, to-do annotation. It's uh, really handy because shut up the compiler. And you keep developing. And you write this really little piece of code. What will happen here? It will compile. But we will have a problem. Grant an exception. Why? Let's go back, let's go step by step, little by little. So we start here. This one is initialized. This guy is good. We use it here. It's initialized, it's good. We call this function, which is here. And we use mapper, which is not initialized. Boo. So yeah, we change again the order of the functions. And this goes on. And I didn't manage to get proper nice uh, code, but same thing with, with the wildcards in, in Dagger 2. If you're using the latest uh, uh, architecture components, if you're using view models, you also will have um, some really ugly factories, especially if you combine them with Dagger. I'm still trying to figure out that. And but it's not all bad. But I just wanted to make a point that there it's not all good either. But back to good good things. So good things that stay positive. What do I like personally for Kotlin? What do I feel that has added a lot of value? We have been using Kotlin since 
mid June, I believe. Um, I started my team followed. It was kind of voluntary. They, I didn't put the gun on the head of anyone. I promise. Um, but these guys got excited, and and I got excited as well. For instance, let's say data classes. Data classes, also known in Java as pollos or plain old Java objects. I don't like that name because pollo in Spanish is chicken and feels weird. <laughs> feels weird to call it like that. But yeah, pollos. So I'm gonna show you a um, data class in Java. I didn't even bother coloring it like. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you the equivalent in Kotlin. That's it. I mean, that has constructor, has getters, it's read-only, it has equals, hash code, to string, and for the price of uh, nothing else, you have a copy constructor, which being immutable, well, you f will find it handly, handy. But you can even, you can even uh, improve it. What about default values? What if I want to have default values in case I don't provide any? Well, you can. Just put it there in the constructor. Th those will be default values. You don't assign them, they will be default to, to that. It could be something more complex, like um, if you don't feel like adding dagger just yet, you can have your instances uh, uh, made there in the constructor, so when you are doing your tests, you can replace them with mocks, or you can go wild. Even more wild, name parameters. Um, we were using auto value for our data classes for some time. Um, I know it's not the best, but their builders are great. So we were missing some builders. Data classes don't have builders, but they have name parameters. I mean, Kotlin has name parameters. And you can do something like this. So here, and just instantiating a model, passing some data, mapping, whatever. What if I add a new, a new field? If I d supply a default value, this will keep compiling. It won't be. It will be alright because it will take the default value. And I am using a name parameter constructor, so the compiler is happy. The code is happy. If I was just passing the values one by one, then it, it wouldn't know. And something, if you are on the functional programming side, SILK classes, these are inspired by the algebraic uh, data types. They're not so strict as in other languages. And I am not such an expert in functional programming, so don't call me out on this. But it's really nice. You can basically have a SILK class with several children and then they are all inherited uh, there, but they cannot be declared outside of that file. So you are guaranteed on runtime that they are always going to be a finite number of children. You can also do really cool stuff uh, like going on a when expression and having exhaustive exhaustiveness, the hard word, exhaustiveness. I'm not even going to try. You can have nice things. Um, but more important, I'm delivering a presentation, so bonus points. Look, all the stuff I fit in one slide. It's a whole repository implementation. One slide. Try to do that in Java. I mean, it's great. Uh, it feels great. And it looks great in slides. And it fits great in slides. I like that, because if I want to do talks, well, for the last three conferences I have attended, almost all the slides were in Kotlin. Because it just it just fits. Um, just remember, these are my words, this is my interpretation. I think Kotlin is here to stay. Even if it doesn't stay in Android, it will stay as a language. There are so many new options that are opening. And um, yeah. Woohoo! And if you don't like it, well, just deal with it. <laughs> Thank you.
Um, so in final words, I need to give credit to the articles I got inspiration from. There are some links that are probably be better. I will send them. Uh, it's just a cons. It's really easy to, to find on the internet. And image credits. Everyone forgets about the image credits. You will get sued. And do you have any questions? Yes, we do. Great. Oh, hello. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I would like to uh, ask this question. question. Uh, do you need, as a very beginner, uh, learn Java um, like for collections and then try to code in on uh, Kotlin? So do you need, the, do you need to know the basics of uh, Java? Well, it's it helps. So it really helps to pick it up fast. But I can show you another example from my team. My team is really peculiar. It's like perfectly made for presentations. Uh, so a while ago, the, um, the product team decided to drop support for um, Windows Phone because Microsoft dropped support for Windows Phone. So suddenly we had a team of c -sharp developers mm -hmm. that were offered, okay, choose a team to join. One of them chose to join uh, my team, well, the team I'm part of, it's not mine, I don't own it, but he mentioned that he found really easy to join Kotlin from, from C Sharp. It was so much similar and so much painless, and he doesn't even want to see Java, like, <laughs> not even smell it. But uh, Java and C Sharp is very. Mm, very it is similar. Yeah, yeah, very similar. It is similar, but like, it's it's not required, right? I will also let you know there is a website. I don't remember the exact name, but it, it compares Kotlin and, and Swift. It's so amazingly similar, like so amazing. I could do just a presentation just scrolling through that website. It's amazing. Uh, um, if, you, if you can, please. <laughs> well, I later. I won't risk well, it now yeah, on live, <laughs> but <laughs> I, we can talk later, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Actually, Kotlin is similar with any language. <laughs> Hello, uh, thank no. you for the presentation. Uh, if I understood correctly, you are using Kotlin in production, right? Yes. Uh, how many people uh, do code in Kotlin in your team? Um, so first, we didn't go crazy and compare everything to Kotlin, just to be clear. Some people understand that, no. We're just creating new code in Kotlin, maintaining Java, which I think is something sensible to do. So. My current team is five. We are five, yeah. As in, we share the platform code, and the five of us write Kotlin. More or less depends on you. I mean, once again, we are not forcing anyone to use Kotlin. But if five of us have decided to do Kotlin, then something good must be there, right? And yes, five of us are writing production code. We uh, sorry. Uh, we started writing tests, like everyone does, but yeah, now it's production. Thank you. And uh, the second question: How did you make your bosses accept the decision to use Kotlin? So we have the precedence of a certain team introducing certain language without telling anyone. I didn't want to do that, so I built a case that. Actually, even if my team is five, I, I am developing one of the smaller applications, the newest one. My user base will not be so impacted. And basically, I just told them, like, not like the puppies, but something similar. Like, it's good. Like, it brings sanity. My team lead accepted it. And since I was the only coder in that platform, it was so much easier. Then just start small, keep spreading. I also deliver a presentation um, to the rest of the team. Some of them liked it, some of them didn't. S the ones who didn't, they are not writing Kotlin, they keep writing Java. Um, it's, it's hard because people are really wary after the whole Swift chaos. 
like migrating from Swift 2 to th Swift 3. So if your manager is not so technical and only heard the horror stories, you may, may be in a difficult position, but you know, it's all about talking to people and talking to the right people. Thank you. The alternative way uh, is uh, developing a one small library for your code. Uh, Java interoperability is allowing this perfectly. That's that's very right. Since it's another JVM language, like you could use it just as, as a regular jar file. Thank you very much. I want to ask you two questions. First, a little. Uh, what about team? Uh, how? Uh, in, in what time, in, in, in what uh, months, your team feel comfortable with Kotlin since you integrate it into your team? Do you feel comfortable now? It takes, uh, if I remember correctly, three months since middle of June. Yeah, it's been about three months uh, writing production code. Um, that doesn't mean that we are fully confident with it, with the language, but we started. We just started writing Java-ish Kotlin. We just started doing the same thing we used to do in Java. We did in Kotlin, and then we have the code reviews. So in our code reviews, instead of doing the regular minimum required of one person, we try to at least have a glance of uh, every decent uh, sized uh, pull request, because that way we learn all together. So. A lot of my comments won't be, this is wrong, but, oh, do you know you can do that? <laughs> or even like, wow, I didn't know you can do that. that it, it happens a lot, because we all learn differently. So we asked our boss to buy the uh, Kotlin in Action book. Uh, one of them took them home. I did the koans and went to presentations. Uh, other people do different stuff. So I think code reviews is a really important part. <laughs> and also, I would really stress, like, if you don't build that library that he mentioned uh, internally, do it in open source. People are nicer than you think, like, except yeah. some the typical guy that just wants you to deliver and doesn't care, but doesn't know that open source doesn't work like that. But it's usually nice. Um, yeah, just spread knowledge. Yeah, understand. And second question, uh, what about exceptions? Is it uh, quite understandable in in log in logs to understand what kind of problem, where is it problem, and so on? So there were some new exceptions that were totally unknown, <laughs> um, but you just get quickly used to them because at the beginning you have a lot of them, <laughs> so <laughs> you get familiar with them, it's and not then. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I didn't find that really challenging. Um, some things could be, such as if you're using RxJava, there was a recent article really popular, like you may be calling the wrong method just because how the SAM um, equivalence works. But once again, like that could happen the first time we integrate the RxJava, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it happened, yeah. I just don't remember. I erased from my memory, but we have been there, right? Like we have integrated Rx Java, and we have been through that, and now we're happier. I hope. That's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Stack Overflow is active because it's official language now. I think. I think, yeah. Um, I haven't checked that, but it wouldn't surprise me. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, you use some development and operation and how static analysis operates with Kotlin. Uh, can you repeat, sorry? Uh, do you employ some development and operations? Uh, is tools like SonarCube uh, and which conducts static analysis of code? So we don't use SonarCube and I think it was proposed. I don't know why it never made it through. We have detect in place and lint, like since now, I don't remember which version, it started reporting some common Kotlin failures, uh, to say it nicely. But the main tools for now is detect. 
So all the tools that work on class file level may work, but Kotlin specific, I think detect is your best shot. It will also help you keep a consistent um, code style, even if you still don't know which one you want. And it just works nicely. And uh, do you mi migrate all your existing code to Kotlin or just uh, use it alongside uh, in your project with Java? No, code? so we just, the ones who want, just create new classes in Kotlin. But we are not doing like me this style, like I touch it, it's Kotlin now. Or even crazier, let's rewrite everything in Kotlin, let's do the automatic conversion. That's generally a bad idea. And automatic conversion works nicely in simple pieces of, of code. You still remember how they were written. And when you convert, you when you perform automatic conversion on a piece, you don't remember how it was written, you are really destined for failure. Thank you. Even Jet, uh, JetBrains uh, doesn't rewrite uh, the whole code base, so. Thank you for a uh, very funny story <laughs> and very useful thing. Uh, my question is, um, uh, Kotlin is really uh, very similar to Swift. And my question is, uh, in your opinion, uh, may this similarity uh, help uh, Android and iOS teams uh, uh, be uh, more close, uh, I mean, uh, in questions of uh, share uh, architecture, some uh, design patterns, maybe coding standards in the culture, mm, and so on. That's, uh, <coughs> sorry. That's a very good question, thank you. Um, actually, uh, you are not the first one to wonder that, and I think there are some already some talks, either schedule or deliver on that. So. Currently in Badu, there's no such movement, but I know some people who are doing it, and I know two, two different uh, flavors, let's say. So one is the crazy idea of Kotlin everywhere, but the view layer. Actually, the very famous Jake Wharton delivered a talk on that topic, like kind of a imaginary future where you could write all, all everything from server to business domain in Kotlin and then just the view layer in whatever you want, thanks to Kotlin native, Kotlin JS, etc. That's one way of thinking. I think it's really, I don't know, imaginative. And the other one, it's having people jump across platforms since it's really similar language I think I remember now there's one talk schedule about it in Kotlin Conf, it maybe. I may need to check that, but it's something that's coming on. And I think it's very exciting times because it just opens so many doors for everyone. So not only for that friend that moved from C Sharp to Kotlin, yeah. but all of us. Thank you. Well, two more questions. Hello. Um, I've been using Kotlin for a while and I like it so far, but recently I found uh, a small issue with it compared to Java. Is that most of you know that in Java we can, in Android Studio, for Java we can extract hard coded strings to resources. But uh, in Kotlin, we are not allowed to do it at the moment. So I think you may have uh, found this problem, and how do you deal with it? Um, actually, I haven't encountered that problem because most most of the code, um, so most of, most of the strings we get are server side. Yeah. Uh, but it's true that the tooling is still not there, still beta. Um, it's really, really more helpful than the tooling we had when it was just plain Kotlin and not no official Android support. But yes, the tooling, it's lacking some support. And if you have tried some of the refactors you may be used to do in Java, you can see that some of them are really broken in Kotlin. And some others, they just don't even work. Um, 
I think it's just the price to pay for being pioneers a bit. It's not the end of the world. It's not something that's going to ruin your day or it may just upset you the first time. But yeah, um, I have encountered some other issues and you just need to think, is it adding more value or are these issues more important? Yeah, for me, I just, uh, sometimes I just too lazy to do that. So I just create a Java file and write some hard coded strings and I use shortcuts and extract the strings. Yeah. But that's totally fine. I mean, yeah, yeah. The, the whole point of Kotlin is that works perfectly fine with Java. And if, if yeah. you wanted to leave your strings there in the Java class, you, you could. And sometimes there are some things that I don't know how to do in Kotlin or I think they look horrible. I leave them in Java and then if someone has a good, better idea in the code review, all yours. If not, then it will, bo it will go like that. I mean, we have writing we have been writing Java for so long. Why, why not keep doing that? Okay, thank you. Hello, thank you. Uh, I have a uh, good news for you. Uh, you can uh, look uh, style guide of Kotlin in uh, repository as Dmitry Jimerov, creator of uh, Kotlin, and uh, you can build uh, code styles uh, uh, in our web world uh, in issues. And uh, my question, um, uh, do you write uh, custom uh, rules for detect? Um, thank you for the tip. And uh, it's not only a problem of uh, having a standard. It's also like now my, my team, we have to agree on what we like, because something may be standard. We, we may not like it. And about writing plugins for detect, actually, that open source project I showed you, I know they are e either thinking about it or doing it because I know they were having some issues. I mean, it's the project where I basically I learned Kotlin and functional programming. It's my Bible. And I know they are on it. I can check it for you with the guys that do it and, and let you know later. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we are going to have a coffee break. Uh, oh, oh, we have a uh, uh, responsibility of uh, choosing the best question. Um, the Kotlin Swift guy. Kotlin Swift guy. Who is Kotlin Swift guy? Thank you. Thank you. And uh, now we have a coffee break. Thank you so uh, thank it you. will be actually small. And after that, we will switch to Russian and speak about uh, code generation by ourselves, not by using already uh, written libraries, but just doing it by ourselves. <laughs> 